Hey students, Mr. Myers here, wanting to bring a quick help video on calorimetry. Uh, we learned about it this week and did a few days of practice, and we're going to have uh, some more things going on this week with it, like in lab and with your lab practical. So to start off, let's look at what a coffee cup calorimeter looks like. We've got a cup with another styrofoam cup on top, and we've got thermometer that goes in through the top and then we've got our liquid that we put in there okay so the idea is the styrofoam cup is insulating whatever is happening inside it uh, as a reaction vessel and we've got the thermometer through the bottom not all the way through because we don't want to poke a hole through the bottom that would not be good okay uh, and so in this scenario let's look at our problem up above they say we're going to take a 28 point gram or 28.7 gram sample of KI and they're dissolving it in 60 grams of water. So the liquid part down here is the 60 grams of water. And then what they do is they take and put, let's say, red, they go and put that KI right in there inside the calorimeter. Okay, and the idea is that that Ki, potassium iodide, is going to dissolve and that process is going to do something. In fact, it says further up here that the temperature drops from 27.2 to 13.2. So remember, when the temperature drops, okay, get rid of that, so we've got a decrease in temperature that means it feels colder to the touch. And we said in the lab, when something feels colder, the process is generally going to be endothermic. Okay, so that's some information we can draw just from the problem itself. We don't have to do any solving just to know that it's an endothermic process. Okay, so this uh, potassium iodide dissolves and it actually makes the system feel colder. Or, or the, I should say the surroundings, what we feel, it feels colder, okay? So let's go about solving the problem. They wanna know delta H for the process, which as we said in class, what we're searching for is kilojoules per mole here. Okay, generally that's what's gonna be is kilojoules per mole. Uh, we started off uh, with Q equals MC delta T. So what's M? M is the mass of the water. So that 60 grams is going to get plugged in here. Q equals uh, 60 grams. And we've got C. And C is the specific heat of water. And it is a constant. So it's going to be a constant 4.18 joules per gram degree Celsius. So we'll plug that in here for C. 4.18 joules per gram degree Celsius. Okay. And lastly, we have our change in temperature. And for a change in temperature, that would be our which one here? T final, so the final one minus the initial. Our final, they tell us it drops from 27.2 to 13.2. So that's our final. And our initial is at 27.2. Okay, this change in temperature is minus 14 degrees Celsius. So that gets plugged in over here for the delta T. So negative 14 degrees Celsius. So plug it in, find out what Q is. 60 times 4.18 times negative 14 comes out to negative 3511.2. So my negative 3511.2 joules. 
remember they want us to find up here kilojoules per mole. So we can easily switch this over to kilojoules. Remember, you can one, two, three. You can move the decimal point over three places to the left, or you can divide by a thousand. It's up to you. But here we end up with negative 3.5112 kilojoules. Okay. So that's for starters. That's Q. We still need to get to moles. And we're going to use this information up here to find that. And we also said in class that delta H for our reaction or our substance, whatever we're working with, is going to be equal to the negative Q of the water. Okay, so Q is heat for the water or it could be for hydrochloric acid really depending on what the aqueous solution is. But the reason it's negative is we had said we expect our conditions, our system to be endothermic. Endothermic, recall, means that delta H is positive. Yet somehow we ended up with a negative kilojoules over here. That doesn't match up. And so if we take the value of Q and put it into this nifty equation here, we end up identifying that delta H of the reaction, or in this case then Ki, I'll just put reaction that's easier to write. So the negative of that, negative 3.5112, we end up with positive 3.5112. 1.1 kilojoules. All right, so that fixed the sign. Now we got to go a step further. We've got to go with this kilojoules and compare it to the 28.7 grams of the Ki and realize that back in unit one when we learned about stoichiometry, we found that we could go grams to moles by molar mass. And that's exactly what we have to do here. One mole of Ki is calculated. Okay, so it's about 165.99. Grams. Okay, so just multiply across and then divide by the 28.7. And the result that we get positive 20, oh, that point is really far away, point 0.3 kilojoules. Per mole. Okay, so positive 20.3 kilojoules per mole. That goes back and it tells us this process was endothermic. All right.